Every business wants good customer reviews. Every customer wants a good experience. So what happens when both sides click? Or in some cases, when they don't? From Yelp and Entrepreneur Media, this is Behind the Review. I'm Emily Washkovic, Yelp small business expert. Behind the Review features conversations with business owners and customers who wrote one of their Yelp reviews. In our discussions, we talk about lessons they've learned that can be used by other businesses to improve their own reviews and their bottom line. Occasionally, I interview industry experts, and that's what we're doing today. I'm interviewing Josh Reeves, the CEO and co-founder of Gusto, a software company that provides payroll, benefits, and human resource management software to small businesses. I actually got connected with Josh through a friend of mine, who's a former Yelp employee, who's now a proud Gusto employee, or as they call themselves, a proud Gusty. In chatting, we realized that Yelp and Gusto both share the same goal of supporting and elevating local businesses through resources and education. So in our conversation today, we're going to dig into a bit more info about Gusto and the benefits of some of their offerings. But we're also going to hear a bit of Josh's entrepreneurial journey and experience with feedback and customer engagement along the way. No matter what industry you're in, and no matter the size or scale of your business, listening to and engaging with customers is a powerful way to enhance and evolve your business. I hope you enjoy our conversation, and if you have any questions about payroll, benefits, or human resource management, send us an email at podcasts at yelp.com. I'm partnering up with the Gusto team to bring you answers on these topics through our BizBytes episodes. Now, let's give our conversation a listen. To kick us off, Josh, why don't you start by giving me an introduction? Tell me a little bit about yourself and your background, and then tell me about Gusto. Thanks, Emily, for having me on. Really excited to be here. I love celebrating small business. A little bit about about me and Gusto. I'm one of the few locals born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, My mom's an immigrant from Bolivia. My dad moved out from Pennsylvania. Both were teachers. So one of the values at Gusto we talk a lot about is service mindset. I definitely got exposure to that as a kid growing up with my parents being teachers. We started Gusto about 12 years ago, so I have a little bit more white hair. I also have now four kids, five and under, since we started the company. But we started the company, me and two other co-founders, because we wanted to help small business. We'll talk about that, I'm I'm sure, very shortly. But you can think of what we do is, is really trying to be this entrepreneurship platform, make things like payroll really easy, make things like benefits really easy, make things like time tracking really easy, all these different things that can be hard for a small business. We want to try to Uh, be a partner and help make their their life a lot easier. I love that. Can you take me to the early days of Gusto? What was going on for you where you identified this is a need, this is a solution that maybe isn't out there for this audience? What kind of got that started for you? Yeah, and I'll bridge us even more. You know, three founders of Gusto, we were all electrical engineering students back in the day. And so really, what's that connection? And, And the quick answer is, Number one, we had each had prior startups. I had had a company with just a few employees. I had set up payroll. I had set up benefits. I had experienced some of the pain and frustration that many small businesses go through. I felt like it was very manual. It was too cumbersome. And then the other big input was actually from my co-founders and myself having family run small businesses. Tomer is one of my co-founders. His dad runs a one-person men's clothing store. He had grown up helping that business. My other co-founder, Eddie, his mom runs a small doctor's office before she retired. He had seen her doing payroll on the kitchen table for 20 years by hand. And my mother-in-law actually also runs payroll or did run payroll before retirement for, for businesses. So 
those are some of the exposure points. When we looked at the market, we realized, yes, there's some big companies out there doing this type of work, but it was actually very fragmented. And a lot of small businesses especially were still doing it on pen and paper manually. And we just felt there was gonna be a better way to do that using modern technology. I love hearing different origin stories, and I'm especially partial to the entrepreneurs who are problem solvers. Josh and his co-founders had all witnessed different businesses struggle with the basic necessity in their success. And not everyone struggled to do payroll, but there certainly was a better way to do it, a more efficient way to do it. Oftentimes, I think there's a misconception that you have to be a big company or of a certain size to have things like payroll software or benefits for your employees. I asked Josh about how Gusto was able to bridge that gap and change people's perception. Yeah, we thought a lot about why hadn't this pain point been solved already, because I don't believe companies exist for the sake of it. Gusto does not exist for our benefit. You know, companies exist to go fix a problem, make something better. So we did spend some time talking, a lot of time talking to small businesses to understand why they were still doing things like payroll by hand. And the reality was until you had a certain number of, of technology advances. You needed cloud, you needed paperless, you needed mobile, in particular mobile, because a lot of business owners are busy, they're on the go, they don't have the time to kind of go home late at night, install some software on their family computer while their kid's playing a video game. That just didn't make sense. They were instead gonna do it by phone calls and on pen and paper. And again, that's just how it was done for a long time. But once you had things like paperless, mobile, and cloud, it was now possible to build a product in your pocket on your phone that actually could be just as useful and just as powerful. The other big hypothesis we had and then was proven, I would say, was uh, just reaching small business. You know, a lot of times companies that build software want to focus on big companies. They want to go help big companies do things better. But there are millions of small businesses out there, about six million employers in the U.S. Over half are less than five employees. And so for these smaller businesses, yes, there's less revenue per customer. And so because a lot of times the go-to-market motion was a high-touch outbound sales activity, these smaller companies just didn't pencil out. And so the companies in the space just didn't prioritize them. And we didn't reinvent everything here. We had to leverage some of the trends underway, but, but the advent of search, the advent of social, the ability to do word of mouth referrals and have amplification, more of a digital motion, but in particular, just build something amazing and people tell others about it. And that gets amplified again through, through social. Um, that's probably the biggest unlock. And so we were always obsessed with this smaller business customer segment. And after a few years, we realized, yes, we've now figured out a way to, to actually reach them in a cost-effective way. And I think prior to Gusto, it was just really hard to do that for anyone else that had been in this space. Absolutely. You came on the scene at the perfect time. I want to dig in a little bit deeper to some of the challenges you solve for, because I think a lot of my listeners are probably dealing with those challenges, but maybe like to think of them as a tomorrow problem. I'm not the biggest fan of fear tactics, but I do think that particularly when it comes to payroll, business taxes, things like that, there's some things that business owners need to be aware of and doing correctly. I'd say there's two pillars of our mission. We have three total, but maybe I'll just speak to two of them. One, just to put it on the table, peace of mind. And I think small business owners get this more than anyone. There are a lot of different rules, regulations, compliance requirements that get created at the local, state, federal level. From the research we look at, it's about 15,000 new rules every year across the whole country. When we started Gusto, close to 40% of companies in the US would get fined every year for incorrectly doing their payroll taxes. And again, it's not just tax calculations and tax payments uh, and then the direct deposit component to the employee but also all of the different documents, forms, filings, and reporting requirements that actually perhaps have good intent in terms of what drives them, but as a result, as an outcome to a business owner who's already incredibly busy wearing 20 hats, you just add 10 more hats onto their head. And so a big part of what we're trying to do, which I'm sure we'll come back to, is where and how can we take on some of that responsibility, 
automate abstract and enable business owners to focus on the things that actually are why they started their company and where they can have the biggest impact. And that's, I think, to the heart of your question, uh, another pillar of our mission we call great place to work. At the end of the day, every business is about people. And I think small businesses get this more than anyone because it's a three, four, five person team. It's perhaps their neighbors. The customers are their neighbors. And so there's this really deep connection to like, of course, I care about my team. I can't do anything without my team. And what we saw again was in big companies, you have all these resources, you have all these different tools, technologies, you have all these teams attached to kind of help you navigate this. And in a small company, you're kind of just on your own. So Gusto really aspires to be that partner. And we think about these as really life moments happening in the product. To give you some examples, you know, making someone, inviting them to join your company, getting that email that says like, we would love for you to be a part of XYZ company. Here's the setup process. And then, you know, your first day on the job, what does that feel like, right? What should someone get paid? That's an important consideration that has huge implications. What should you do around benefits in terms of budget and allocation of money? Someone has a kid, that's a dependent being added to healthcare, but that's also someone joining the, you know, the broader family of the company and probably worth celebrating and acknowledging. Again, small businesses do that by default. So we think about how to automate and abstract the stuff that should be behind the scenes. I love sending this email to customers every quarter where we go, here's all the things you need to do for payroll filings. We did it all for you, have a great day. But on the flip side, spending even more time on Am I building a team effectively? Are people reaching their potential? Are we collaborating well? And yes, as an outcome, you know, are we retaining great talent? Are we able to kind of fill new roles efficiently with great talent? Obviously, this has a big impact on the success of a company. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned in the beginning of our conversation how many employers are small business owners. And I think there's this big disparity between benefits for an employee who works for a big company and benefits for an employee who works for a small company. And Gusto really helps bridge that gap. Yeah. Yeah. We, one of the big themes of our company is how do we bring stuff big companies have had to small companies, as you mentioned. Well, let's say first it starts with actually customers, small businesses. We serve over 300,000 small businesses across the country. It's what they're asking for. So there's a really important feedback loop, whether it's spoken directly, emailing, on calls, in chat, or unspoken. But we really want to understand the things they would love Gusto to help make easier in their life beyond what we do today. And that's really where we start with any product expansion. To your question, though, we have expanded the product quite a bit. We started with just doing payroll. We expanded into health benefits. That includes medical, dental, vision. There's many different types of health benefits. There's a lot of different pre-tax dollars that companies can get access to that a small business isn't aware of, where we can kind of make that more accessible. And we know that cost is a big consideration here. 401k is a great example where we were able to find partners that have very low cost structures and fees that are really great experiences. And then a business owner is obviously still deciding if they're going to have a match or not, how much that ties to their budget. But the administration piece, how to make that just way more streamlined, way simpler, because it's not just saving money, but also time. Again, business owner is so, so busy. Them having to go research and find all these things on their own is just why a lot of these different products don't get, get utilized as much generally by small business. Uh, but you have, yeah, things related to healthcare, things related to retirement. There's a whole world of business insurance and workers comp. Sometimes these are optional. Sometimes these are really required, right? You have states, including for 401k that have mandates. And so there's kind of this balance between, is it a way to kind of incentivize and reward my team, but also where do I want to and need to be frankly compliant? And if I'm not going to be compliant, I might get fined or penalized, which is obviously really, really detrimental to how a company performs. There's a whole bunch of tools around time tracking and hourly. And if you have you know, shift schedules or clocking in, clocking out, we have the ability for folks to hire contractors or employees in other countries if that's part of their business. Again, things that big companies have had access to and small companies have been left on their own to navigate. We're trying to kind of rebalance that a bit. But it all starts, again, with, with clear business customer need. Uh, and then, you know, our goal is to go deliver value, prove that we can solve that pain point, and then earn, you know, the trust and the credibility for them to choose us to do more with Gusto. 
So I know a lot of my listeners out there probably are the pen and paper folks. You know, they might still be taking care of a lot of these things on their own. Can you share a little bit about how this influences business owners, particularly through time saving? It sounds like you're taking away some of the need to be an expert in these areas and putting it back in their hands to do what they're best suited for. Yeah, I think it gets to the heart of why people start a business in the first place. And I just want to emphasize, like, it is an incredible honor and privilege to be of assistance to this community. It's the heart and soul of the economy. I would argue it's the heart and soul of society. If you look at the number of people employed in small, medium-sized business, the number of companies out there, it's a huge, huge number. And when I meet, and I love meeting with small businesses, it's also so rewarding because you realize people start these companies really as a labor of love, right? They have a passionate area they care about. It could be in their physical proximate community, or it could be more of a digital business, but it's something that they really find so motivating and excited to go tackle that they just go go get the ball rolling. And you know they're also providing for their family. It's a meaningful, important source of income for them to be able to live the life they want. And so those are the motivations and, and it, I find them fairly pure, frankly. And then, and then small businesses confront the reality of all of the different things they have to go do to even start a company, right? State tax registration, as one example, is a complex one. With COVID and pandemic, we find more companies now having employees in multiple states. That adds a lot more overhead. That was something that wasn't really in the mind of folks when this all got started many, many years ago. And then also, you know, all the other rules and requirements that come as a company grows, navigates its expansion, et cetera. And again, these are things that a business isn't going to be better off or differentiate by filling out a form for the fifth time with a blue pen or a black pen, right? But if they don't, and if they don't pay that tax contribution or obligation, right, like they're going to get in trouble. They're going to get penalized. They might even get shut down. So I think there's just this big transition. We didn't invent payroll, for example, obviously. It existed well before Augusto. Um, but the chance to do it with modern tools and technology really does provide, and as an outcome, a chance to focus more on what helps you stand out and separate your business from others. And, you know, one way I also think about it is just look around the rest of your life, rest of our life, right? Like think about how we communicate with friends and family. Think about how we, you know, use different tools on our you know, smartphones in our pocket. Think about how that was done 10, 20 years ago. Think about how we map, right? How you decide where to go. And when it used to be the physical maps, then it became printed out maps. Now it's just this really dynamic process with the screen embedded in your car. Think about how much time that saves. And so all these other parts of our life have had these advances. What we found at least with our business is when folks then look at things like payroll or health insurance setup or time tracking or workers comp, they look at it and go, here's how I've been doing it maybe for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, why am I still doing it that way? And like, maybe that actually also could be made modern and more streamlined. And again, that's that's a big part of why we started the company and it's our purpose to keep delivering and proving that that's the case. And the outcome is saving people time. Time is money uh, and it gives you a chance to focus on the most important, important parts of your business. We're gonna take a quick break. Be right back. We all want the best of both. Dessert without calories, luxury without expense, and how about security without passwords? With Okta, it's possible. We secure identity for your business so you can safely use any technology. You can build experiences that are richer and more secure, grow revenue without running up costs, and scale easily no matter your tech stack. Enjoying the best of both? It's possible. It's Okta. Okta, the world's identity company. I want to talk a little bit about your own experience in the growth and evolution of Gusto in a way that can probably be really interesting to all businesses as they're growing. Talk to me a little bit about as you were growing, this concept of going from just serving California to then being nationwide, how were you able to prioritize what you were going to attack and also you know, listen to those new clients that were coming on and telling you what they needed. That kind of seems like competing uh, things for your time, but you've grown a lot since 12 years ago. So in the early days, were you, you know, looking for that insight from existing clients? Were you kind of going out and just asking in general with people who maybe had their own alternatives for your payroll solutions? Where did you start 
with the figuring out what you wanted to focus on and what you wanted to offer first? Yeah. So I always think about prioritization and focus is really important. It's not a matter of if, but when in terms of other additional activities, but sequencing matters a lot. So my advice to entrepreneurs is you kind of need to do both. Like there should be some clear problem, pain point, thing that's proven to be broken. And you should have a point of view, really a hypothesis on how the future could look quite different, where that pain point is smaller or gone and the customer you serve is much better off. But then how to get there, how to go climb that set of mountains, if you will. You know, if you just kind of want to go in a room and whiteboard it all, that's probably not going to work. There needs to be a really, really big feedback loop to customers. And and again, most importantly, when you start to create your first product or your first feature, you need that feedback loop to know, did you even create something useful? Is it actually helpful? And I love in, in our business model, you know, we create something useful, helpful, customers pay us for it. It's a subscription. And if we didn't create something useful, helpful, then they wouldn't pay us for it. So I actually really advise anyone that's a software entrepreneur, you know, that feedback loop of would the customer pay for it is actually a pretty important one. If they're not willing to pay for it, it might mean you haven't created something that helpful or useful in their life. So for us, you know, we knew that payroll was going to be the starting place. It's the least optional part of the stack. If you don't pay someone, they're going to quit pretty fast. So, you know, that's a pretty non-controversial statement. And so we knew it was going to be this very, very generalizable kind of problem space. We also knew it's where all the data sits and all the transactions sit, right? Several hundred billion dollars have been processed through Gusto. And we're doing all these filings and reporting requirements on behalf of our customers. And so we you know, need to take that data very, very securely, safely, store it effectively, you know, take it very, very seriously. And we've always done that from day one. But that was kind of where we got started. And then that feedback loop, as I mentioned earlier, the things they wish we could do on top, right? The number of things they go, I, thank you for solving this pain point. I have this other one that's kind of related. Can you help here too? Such an important feedback loop. That can be through customer support tickets and, and discussions. Discussions. It can be through feedback surveys. It can be through in-person kind of UXR kind of research, uh, user experience, interviews. My advice is all of the above and more. The more feedback loops, the better. And if you also, again, this is where it's a balance, just do whatever is asked of you if you're building a product, then you just build a better, faster, cheaper version of what already exists, which might be okay, but that's probably going to be by definition incremental. There also needs to be some leaps of faith here in terms of ways to do things that were never done that way before. And I like the analogy. This is now a pretty dated one, but you know, what I was told, I, I like propagating this metaphor here or analogy rather is if you ask people a long time ago what they wanted, they would have said they wanted faster horses. Instead, people wanted to move places faster and someone had to invent the car. So that's like an example to me of that, that last concept I just shared, where it's not just kind of doing what's asked. It's also thinking, where, where is the unspoken behind the scenes underlying pain point here that can't even be verbalized? And if we can go solve that, that's how you can create magical experiences where, again, the outcome is mostly either the customer saving a ton of time, saving a ton of money, or building better places to work, retaining their team more effectively, being more competitive, being more successful as a business. But those are all all outcomes. It starts with that conversation with the customer. My longtime listeners know how happy I was to hear Josh talk about the value and impact of customer feedback. Gusto may not be on Yelp for their clients to review, but that doesn't mean they don't hear things their customers think in a variety of avenues. I asked Josh to share some of the ways they gather and implement feedback, especially at such scale. Yeah, so I think customer feedback is so, so important, and there is not just one way to do it. Uh, there are many ways to do it, and we try to do all of them. So just to highlight a few, but I could go on for a while on this, there's really at scale, very structured, statistically significant type stuff where we can look at all of the different customer interactions, the different you know, customer service interactions, the different tickets and emails that might come in, and we can parse out from that based on how we categorize, based on the different 
words that get brought up, you know, what the sentiment might be, what the feedback is. There's the actions people are taking when they join, when they spread the word, they do a referral, or on the flip side, if they churn or leave, why? So these are all like, with a scale of 300,000 plus businesses, very data-driven processes where we on a very regular basis try to figure out like what is the trend, what's working, what's not working, and how do we make sure we're never surprised by uh, the direction of, of one of these metrics. There's also at the other extreme, a whole bunch of really important qualitative stuff too, because I think this quantitative is useful, but actually the pitfall is it can just become all numbers. Qualitative is when we do our all hands every two weeks, we have a you know five minute video spotlight where one of our guestees interviewed a small business owner and tells their story. Now on its own, is that enough? No, but that means that every two weeks, every guestie is getting exposure to a customer and their story and why they started their business and how they use Gusto. And we do a lot of things like that. When we have our leadership quarterly on-site time where we discuss and go through key initiatives, every leader at Gusto goes through a shadowing process. We make sure that we have direct either joining phone calls, shadowing a phone call, taking a phone call, interaction and exposure to customers. Then there's the whole world of digital, whether it's through Twitter or through NPS surveys that we run. And that gets piped into Slack. And for us, then there's channels where you can go self-serve, all this different content, you know, hour by hour, day by day. Again, I, I can list out several things here. It's not that every person is doing all these every moment of every day, but making sure that they're here as tools in the toolbox so that if you're a product manager or if you're a marketer or if you're a brand individual or if you're a customer service professional, whatever part of Gusto, you're able to access the right feedback loops to do your job better with a connection to the customer. This has been awesome, Josh. So much helpful insights that I know our listeners will learn from. To close us out, why don't you tell us where everyone can go to learn more about Gusto and check you all out? Thank you so much for having me on. At Gusto, we just really love serving small, medium-sized business. We've been doing this for 12 plus years. We'll be doing this for decades. The chance to actually solve these pain points see that feedback loop is what makes it worth it and, and why we're so excited to keep doing what we're doing. The easiest way to learn more about Gusto is to go to gusto.com. We also have a lot of resources there inside the talk shop umbrella that actually are just available, kind of more compliance centric guides for a small, medium sized business. We have a bunch of other free tools there as well. But if you ever do need things like payroll or benefits or time tracking, et cetera, by all means, we'd love to serve you. Uh, and again, thank you for having me on. And that concludes our episode. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to take a thing or two away to implement in your own life. Whether it's a new idea that you can bring back to your business or a fresh perspective on how to be a positive influence as a consumer, we share these stories to inspire and create more meaningful connections in your local community. This episode featured a conversation with Josh Reeves, the CEO and co-founder of Gusto. To hear more about the episode, head to yelp.com forward slash behind the review. And don't forget to subscribe to the show on your favorite listening platform so you get an alert each Thursday that we drop a new episode. To claim your own Yelp business page and start engaging with consumers, visit business.yelp.com. Our theme song is performed by Ali Schwartz and produced by Robbie G of Messerol Sound.